Recently I decided to set myself a challenge by seeing if I could build a gaming PC with a budget of just £50, but with a couple of conditions. So this cannot have any proprietary hardware in it at all. So that means no Dell or HP motherboards and power supplies. This has to be a fully customizable PC Master Race experience. And on the subject of PC Master Race, this also has to be able to run Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Grand Theft Auto V at 1080p. That's right, we're going for the full gaming experience here, but with only a budget of £50. So today I'm going to be talking you through the process of how I went about this and showing you what I came up with. Hey everyone, this is Frank here. Welcome back to Jaeger Tech. Today's challenge is very interesting because £50 is just not much of a budget to build any PC with, let alone a gaming PC, and let alone a gaming PC that can run Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, because damn, that game, it has been bringing gaming PCs to their knees all over the place recently. But it is still a crazy popular game, really addictive and fun to play, so I wanted to see how I could do with an extremely tiny budget running that game. Let's get started with discussing how you even go about building a gaming PC on this kind of a budget. To start with, I decided to come up with an absolute bare minimum spec that I could run some of these games on. So let's talk about that for a second. For the CPU, I decided that it had to be a quad core. That wasn't even in the question. A dual core just wasn't going to cut it. And most of the dual cores with hyper threading, so they have four threads like the i3 CPUs, most of those would probably be out of my budget range. So I ended up settling on looking for either a Core 2 Quad, so that's a quad core Intel CPU from the LGA 775 socket, quite old, but still very uh, competent when it comes to gaming, or looking for the Phenom 2 X4 range of CPUs from AMD. Similar kind of era, both overclockable quad core CPU ranges. So I was looking for any of those. When it came to RAM, it was pretty easy. 8 gigs, the end. Don't care about speed, don't care about heat spreaders, don't care about anything other than 8 gigs. If you try and scrimp and go for 6 or even 4 gigabytes, damn it, I've seen this too many times where people have tried to scrimp and save on their RAM and go with 4 or 6 gigs of RAM in their gaming system, and modern games are just going to chew you up and spit you out with that, especially PUBG. Even 8 gigs with PUBG is kind of treading the line. I've seen that game go up to 10 and 11 under certain patches because optimization's a bitch, right? So look for 8 gigs. You just, that's the minimum. Onto the graphics card, we have another bare minimum spec to be looking for, and that is 2 gigabytes of VRAM. So your video memory has to be at least 2 gigabytes. Some modern games can run on one or one and a half gig cards, but uh, some of them just can't, and especially PUBG. At the very low presets at 1080p, you're going to be looking at 1.7 to 1.8 gigabytes usage all the time. So you need to be looking for those two gigabyte variants of cards. And as for like a base set of models, I would say you're looking at the GTX 660 two gigabyte variant, obviously, or the Radeon HD 7850. If you can get a better model of card that also has two gigs of VRAM, of course, that's going to be fine. But those are my baselines. As for the rest of the components, you kind of want to save as much as you can. So for the motherboard, you might want to get a slightly nicer one if you can, uh, so you can do some decent overclocking, but it's really not worth paying too much for. Uh, and again, with the power supply, you might want a slightly nicer one for overclocking, but again, it's not worth paying too much more for. And then when it comes to something like storage, 160 or 250 gigs will be fine, but it, it really doesn't matter just as much storage as you want to install a couple of games on. And you can always expand it with another hard drive later because we have a fully customizable PC here, guys. As for the case, as cheap as you possibly can that can fit all your hardware in it, quite frankly, if you're happy with it, stick it on a cardboard box. That's the cheapest case option. With that minimum spec laid down, I quickly realized that buying all the parts separately just wasn't gonna happen. Getting a CPU motherboard, hell, the RAM would cost you 15 to 20 pounds by itself, even if it was DDR2. So instead, what I would recommend is the best way to look for something on this kind of a budget 
is look for an already built system that you can upgrade. Something that is quite old, quite set back there, but that you can upgrade quite cheaply. And like I said before, when I'm ruling out all HP and Dell and other like office built PCs, because like it's just not the best experience. Some of them won't even run with high power graphics cards in them. And even then you're limited on expansion and just what you can do with the system. And there is just a lot to be said for a fully customizable PC. And that's why we're going down that route. So I started looking on websites like eBay and Gumtree, searching for Q6600 and Phenom 2X4 uh, in the fully built desktop sections. And I ended up coming across one on Facebook Marketplace. Of all the places, I don't even know why I was checking there. I just thought I might, and I'm glad I did. I found this system for 50 pounds, so all of our budget but it did have two 500 gigabyte hard drives, a QC6600, only four gigs of RAM, but that's easily upgradable, especially if we sold one of those hard drives. Um, but it also had a monitor and keyboard and everything included. So I offered them 30 pounds if I just took the PC tower itself. And they said they'd do it for 35, which kind of left me on the fence. So I asked them to tell me a bit more information or maybe send me pictures of the inside. And who oh, oh, did they? The amount of money we're gonna to have to invest into the system to get it to our minimum spec is actually quite low. So I was like, yep, I'll take that, 35 pounds, done. We actually got a pretty good deal here. So a decent motherboard for us to get an overclock on. The power supply is more than enough to handle any power even when overclocked. Four gigs of RAM does need upgrading, but at least we have those two, two gigabyte sticks of 800 megahertz. So it's gonna be a much easier upgrade and the graphics card now that does need upgrading we have an 8800 gtx which doesn't even have a single gigabyte of vram so definitely needs upgrading but these things actually go for like a surprising amount of money on ebay i managed to flip it on ebay and take home 20 pounds even after fees and shipping so that is a pretty nice budget to be dealing with for a graphics card and once again, I managed to find one on Facebook Marketplace. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but that place just had some hot friggin' deals when I was looking for these parts. And it was a 660 EVGA Superclocked Edition, two gigs of VRAM, and I got it for 30 pounds. So that's a 10 pound graphics card upgrade, all said and done, which puts us up to 45 pounds total for the build, but we still need those four gigs of RAM. So I put the 500 gigabyte hard drive, the spare one, on sale on Gumtree for 10 pounds collect. And sure enough, someone came in, collected it, gave me a 10 pound note. And I took that 10 pound note into CEX later that day and picked up two sticks of two gigabyte DDR2 800 megahertz for actually for eight pounds. And that brings us up to 43 pounds for the entire system. And we are sitting on one hot gaming PC. We've got a Q6600, eight gigs of RAM, a GTX 660, all with nice hardware to go with it. I mean, we even have a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I thought we'd end up with like a 160 gig or something. So I'm quickly gonna give the graphics card and the CPU cooler a clean so we can get some nice overclocks out of them. Then we'll get on with overclocking them and seeing how they perform.
Kentucky. So, does this gaming PC provide the best experience that you can have in PUBG right now? No, obviously not, but then that wasn't really the point, was it? What this PC provides is a legitimately playable experience in PUBG at the moment. And by legitimately playable, I mean A, it doesn't look like dog sh and B, it provides you with a high enough average frame rate that is consistent enough that you're not getting constant drops every time you enter a gun battle to the point that I didn't feel disadvantaged using this rig at all. No, all of my failures while gaming on this PC were entirely due to the fact that I suck. Now for me personally, I would say that the sweet spot in terms of settings for this were those 900p settings I showed you in the benchmark. So that was 900p around medium settings because although 1080p very low was playable, it did look a bit like dog sh whereas the 900p settings I set up had pretty nice graphical fidelity and it gave me pretty nice frame rates as well. But as you saw in the Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmark, when it comes to other games, this PC can really go toe to toe with them. So you can be running at pretty decent, like medium to high settings, depending on the game at full 1080p. So if you're not looking to run PUBG 24 seven, then you'll have a really nice gaming experience on this rig. And of course, one of the big benefits of going down a route like this is that even after you've outgrown it as a dedicated gaming PC, you can add in expansion cards or extra hard drives to transform it into something new and useful like a home file server or a dedicated streaming PC to stream HD gameplay off of your brand new and improved gaming PC. As for my extreme budget gaming PC, I'm actually gonna be keeping it unlike most of the builds I do for the channel because I think it's the perfect low budget tinkering box guinea pig for some of the projects I have planned coming up on the channel. But those are for another day and I think we're about finished here. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of it and of the gaming PC down in the comments below. Also, if you have any games that you want me to benchmark on this PC, let me know down in the comments and I'll try and reply with what sort of performance I got. Other than that, please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And that's it for now. This has been Frank Jaeger with Jaeger Tech. Have a good one. Get my mouse going. The feet keep coming off of this. Oh my God, it's Windows Vista. Avert your eyes. Don't look directly at it.